money was something that I had to learn quick and in a hurry and definitely made some mistakes with when I was there. If you watched my week one vlog, you would know that I accidentally took out around 700 US dollars on accident from the ATM because I put one too many zeros in there. So one thing that is going to save you is the app XE. Before you get to Jamaica, or really before you get to anywhere that you're traveling, download the app XE and put on the app the countries that you're going to, as well as the currency that you want to convert it from. So for example, I have USD on here, and then for Jamaica, I would have JMD for the Jamaican dollar. With money in Jamaica, the majority of the time, exchange of money is going to happen in cash. So coming from the United States where almost everything happens with a card, I was shocked. Everything is in cash. Hear me. Everything is in cash. Take out a large enough quantity of cash that you won't have to keep going back to the ATM again and again and again. You know, I would keep enough cash on me and then the rest of it I would store in my accommodation. Now, depending on where you're living, that might not be something that you wanted to do, but that saved me from one, having to have a bunch of ATM charges and from having to go back to the ATM. The ATM that I use and the one that I would recommend if you are in the grill is MCB. I would also recommend you go into the branch because a lot of times they would have a security guard there and it would be monitored by video cameras and things like that. So I felt comfortable going in there, getting out my money and not having an issue. In the banks in Jamaica, you can get money out in USD and in Jamaican. With USD, there, there is a cap on how much you can get out, but with Jamaican, there is not. So don't make the mistake that I made and accidentally take out $700. Like there is no cap on that because this is a tourist town. They want you to spend your money. People are taking out lots of money because they saved up for years and years maybe to come and blow some money here. So please make sure that you're taking out the correct amount. Use the app that I just talked about when you're there. Like I would literally like pull it up while I was in line. I would say, okay, I'm fine, take out this amount. And then I would put it in, in the machine and confirm and get it out. All your transactions are going to be in cash. The exception for this is restaurants, and hotels. You can use your card there. I would not recommend it. And I always paid in Jamaican. I got my money out in Jamaican and I paid in Jamaican. Almost everywhere takes US, but again, the currency conversion is not always going to be in your favor. The other thing is you don't want to seem like a tourist, right? Like your whole point if you're staying there for long periods of time is to integrate into the culture. So although they will take US, once they see that you have US, Prices tend to change. So I would always pay in Jamaican, get my change back in Jamaican. So it's very important that you learn the currency so that you can feel comfortable being able to pay for things. The next thing we're gonna talk about are things to bring. Things that I brought that I was really happy that I brought and maybe some things that I didn't bring or didn't bring enough of that I want to tell you that you need to bring. So number one, an umbrella. I'm gonna say it again for those in the back. Bring an umbrella! Especially if you're going from September to December. That is the rainy season. But I strongly feel you should bring an umbrella to every country you travel to. I got stuck out in the rain and I had an umbrella with me. Like in my accommodation that I did not bring out. I got stuck in the rain one time with $500 worth of equipment. I had everything with me and I was literally tucking that shit up under my boobs to try to stop the torrential rain from coming down on me and standing under a tree, which I know is an electrocution risk, right? They tell you not to stand under a tree, but it was literally my last ditch hope other than uh, my boob cave that I had created for not having everything get ruined. And thank God nothing got ruined. Bring an umbrella, you're going to need it. Also, it's really hot in Jamaica, as you can imagine. And sometimes, especially if you're walking, you will just want an umbrella to shade you. And a lot of Jamaicans actually walk with umbrellas to shade them while they're walking in town. Two. A lock. I think that you should bring a lock again to anywhere that you are traveling. And I mean like a padlock, a lock that either has a key or a combination. I used my lock several times. I locked my bike up every day when I was using it. I also used it to lock my backpack up when I was swimming. I also used it to throw at a dog that was attacking me in Jamaica. So I used it to warn them. Did not actually have to throw it. 
So locks can be very helpful. The next one is bug spray. I brought one can of bug spray and one set of individual wipes, you know, that you wipe your body with that has like the bug spray on it. Wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. Bug spray is so expensive in Jamaica and the mosquitoes in Jamaica are actually raging. I got to the point where I was thinking, oh, like, Jamaican locals, they don't really use smoke spray and the bugs aren't bothering them, um, so I should be fine. You're gonna get bitten up. Bring it, bring a bottle a month. The next one is bikinis or swim trunks. Bring two times the amount you think you're gonna bring. I would say that for the most part, I am a minimalist as far as packing. I will pack the same for three months as I will pack for a year. I always bring one regular size suitcase that I will check. And then I bring a carry-on and a personal item, which is normally a backpack. For 90 days, I think I packed about six bathing suits and some of them were bikinis and some of them were one pieces. It wasn't enough, okay? You're going to always or constantly be in the water. No pants, all the bikinis. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is shoes. I brought one pair of heels, never put them on. You will never put them on. I also brought one pair of hiking boots, never put them on. You will never put them on. And I went hiking. What I would recommend is get yourself a pair of hiking sandals, like Chacos or Tevas, something that you can get wet that will also dry off quickly, but that you'll be comfortable walking in for long periods of time. My high heels, no, the, no. If you're in heels, you're gonna be the only one that's in heels, okay? You don't need a pair of heels. Yes, they look super cute. If you wanna bring them, you can take a picture in your hotel room with them on and then take them off. Everyone just wear sandals. And this includes wedges. Keep the wedges at home. You're gonna wear sandals. Sandals. I had a lot of people ask me like, how do you make friends? They saw that in my vlogs that I have different people in there. It's hard for me to be like, to Jamaica. But I'll just tell you what has worked for me in both in Jamaica and different places that I have been. Well, the first thing is just go up to people. I, I know that that's hard, but I have met so many people by just being like, hey, how are you? What are you doing here? Like, how long are you here for? My name's Elena. I live over here. I'm staying here for three months. It would be cool to hang out. Like, I, I'm just kind of that person. Like, I, do, I will scope to people and just start a conversation. Another thing that you can do is you can always just be like, hey, I'm by myself here and I see you guys are sitting together. Would it be okay if I just like hung out for a little bit or if you adopted me for an hour? I know that sounds kind of weird, but that has always worked for me. You don't see a lot of other solo female travelers. You see a lot of females that travel in pairs or in groups. So because of that, it's really nice to kind of just go up to someone and then you have a friend group for however long they're gonna be there. I've had some people that I've been friends with for an entire weekend. I've had some people that I've been friends with for months <laughs> because I just went up to them. They happen to be in the same place. They're staying for a month. And then I have a built-in friend group to go and do things Maybe something that can help you is to know that if it's embarrassing, you never have to see them again because you're in a new country. Half the time people are thinking about themselves anyway, they're not gonna remember you. So if it doesn't work out, then it's just practice for the next time. A lot of times it's positive and will work out. You'll make some great friendships. You'll have people that you can go and do things with. You'll go to cool new places. So since you're already getting yourself out of your comfort zone by going to a new country, potentially traveling alone, go a little bit further and just go up and talk to some people. I might just do an entire budget dedicated video, but I will let you know in terms of budget, I do know that my budget for three months, not including flights and accommodation, was $3,000. I came in significantly under $3,000. But I think the reason why I did was because I had several health things happen while I was in Jamaica, which kind of cut down the amount of time I had to go out and about. I did sacrifice going and doing some things while I was there in terms of tourist destinations. Both of those things, as well as the fact that I did have local Jamaicans around me and made Jamaican friends, which also made it a little bit cheaper for me in terms of like going to the market and things like that where people tend to charge you more. 
if you are not a Jamaican. So a lot of times I didn't get overcharged when I went places. So take that as you will and use that as maybe a marker for how much you should save for Jamaica. <laughs> this is gonna be specific to Negril that I think that you should definitely go to if you're staying in Jamaica for even a short time or extended period of time. Those places are Rick's Cafe, Definitely worth it. Go to Rick's Cafe, it's a great time. Go to Margaritaville. Extabi, Extabi Resort has beautiful caves. It has wonderful cliffs, just a great place to swim. Go to Catch a Falling Star, that's right down the road from Rick's. Wonderful place to have a drink at the end of the day. It's beautiful, it's, it's on the cliff side. Swimming there is wonderful and the drinks and the food are so good. And the number five is going to be to definitely just walk down Seven Mile Beach. Um, this could be a several day thing. There are so many places down Seven Mile Beach. Literally, you can be dropped off anywhere. Margaritaville is the easiest place to start. And then you can either walk up from Margaritaville or down. If you're staying in the grill and you have the time and money to be able to go out, I would definitely recommend that you also go to Blue Hole Mineral Springs. I have a whole video about that that I can tag in here. And I think that you should also definitely try to get to a river. There's a lot of rivers around that locals can tell you about or take you to, but there, the rivers are beautiful and I would definitely recommend that you go to a river. I am a vegan. I've been a vegan for six years. So if you are plant-based or a vegan, this is gonna be specifically for you. I'm sorry for everyone else. I'm sure you're gonna be fine while you're there. Even pescatarians, go, go to the mediator side because you're gonna be fine too, okay? Vegans and vegetarians, plant-based pals. For the most part, I would say Jamaica is was fine. It really was fine. Did I always have what I wanted? No, but if you've been plant-based for any period of time, that's probably something that you've experienced. Some tips or tricks for you as a plant-based person. You can almost always substitute for coconut milk. You may be a little bit reliant on potatoes or starches, things like plantains, mashed potatoes, fries. You may be eating a lot of potatoes. <laughs> if you're someone who has the ability to cook and you have a kitchen at your accommodation, you'll be perfectly fine. You can shop at both, both the fresh markets and you can shop at the uh, local grocery stores. I will have a video coming out about that, what it's like to shop for food in Jamaica. You, you will have all the fruits, vegetables, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, even nutritional yeast that you would want. They have all of that there. They even have black salt. I mean, they have all of it there. Eating out is a little bit harder sometimes, but you may just have to ask. And that's my biggest tip for you, ask. A lot of times someone will make it for you vegan. Another uh, term to use is ital. So if you want it, no meat, it would be ital. A lot of times though, that also means no salt. So you can ask for an eye towel and then you can also tell them but you can put some salt on it. And you have rice and peas you can have, festival, pastas, sometimes sandwiches, salads, <laughs> lots of fresh juices. So just kind of look around. You'll see what you can get. That's another kind of random thing that might be helpful, especially if you're staying for long periods of time. If you are staying in Jamaica, you are most likely going to be washing your clothes in a washing machine and hanging them to dry. So they hang all their clothes to dry there on a line. That was definitely something that I had to get used to. If you are staying for a really long period of time and they don't have laundry facilities in terms of a washer at your location, you will be using a laundry mat. You just go and drop off all your clothes and then you come and you pick them up at another time and they're all done for you. So I am going to have a final Jamaica vlog coming up in the next couple of weeks that talks about my time there and how I felt about Jamaica, how it made me feel as a person. This is just going to be a tiny piece of that, so stay tuned for that. But overall feelings, Jamaica is a beautiful country with beautiful, kind, generous, loving people, but it's very different. It's got a different currency, culture, way of life. There's a different vibe in Jamaica altogether. All of it is great and it's different, but that is the whole point of traveling, right? The whole point is that you are going there to experience a different culture and see different things. And so I don't wanna to give too much away, but I will just let you know that, do I recommend that you travel to Jamaica? A hundred percent, a thousand percent. Like 
go. It's beautiful. Not only is it so beautiful, but what makes it even more beautiful are the people, really. For me, it was the first and only time in my life that I was in an ethnic majority with people <laughs> ever. And I didn't know how that was going to be, you know? Being black in a black country, how would that be? It was such an experience and it was wonderful and and it was fun. I don't know how to explain it other than to just, because I don't wanna give it all away. But I will just let you know, if you're asking me if I felt safe while I was there, yes, I felt safe while I was in Jamaica. People are so afraid of, you're going to Jamaica as a single female? Yeah, I was. I definitely felt like it was able to be done on a budget. I really think for most for most budgets, you can do it. I think that most people would enjoy the food there, would enjoy the vibes there. Like it's just, it's a wonderful place, but I cannot say it enough that the Jamaican people are what make the country so good. So if you're going to come to it with an American lens, expecting it to be like the United States, then I think that you're gonna have a hard time. But if you are open to it being different, then I think that you're gonna have a great time. I had a wonderful time. I loved my time in Jamaica. I loved the people I met there. I loved the things I was able to do. I had so much personal growth from being there and I'm so excited for you guys to see over the next couple of weeks everything I was able to do in my last couple of months in Jamaica because I was able to do some really cool things. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to me to see how long I can make this traveling thing a reality. For this year, I am putting it out there that my channel is gonna get monetized. So please, Help me out. If you can share this video, share it. Share it with your mom, share it with your auntie, share it with your barista. That's gonna be my goal. So definitely if you can subscribe to me, turn on those notifications, uh, follow me on my socials to see what else I'm getting up to, and stay tuned because I have a lot more coming up. And I also know the next country that I'm going to be in. Thank you everyone for being here with me. I'll talk to you later.